Universitas Brawijaya had proclaimed as Entrepreneurial University, who first set in the strategic plan Brawijaya University in 2006. To become into Entrepreneurial University, Universitas Brawijaya have to reform three strategic issues in the field of autonomy, national competitiveness, and health organization. That basic become the foundation of any research that is implemented to have usefulness so the science and technology resulting from research activities can be developed into a unit in the community. As entrepreneurial university, faculty of administration Brawijaya University has dynamically developed supporting the vision of Universitas Brawijaya. Faculty of Administration Brawijaya University for more than half century has been the best trustable administrative education institution to graduate with the best bachelor degree in the field of administrative science. Dengan visi menjadikan VIA sebagai lembaga ilmu administrasi yang bermutu dan diakui oleh halayak luas, baik di dalam maupun di luar negeri, kami akan selalu meningkatkan kualitas dan kinerja pendidikan yang berbasis pada nilai-nilai tata kelola kewirausahaan. Di dalam pengembangan pendidikan, kami juga didukung dengan adanya tenaga pendidik yang mumpuni dan ahli di bidang ilmu administrasi, memiliki latar belakang pendidikan dari dalam maupun luar negeri, atau tenaga pendidik di VIA UB juga tak jarang merupakan praktisi profesional sesuai dengan bidang keilmuannya. Mereka adalah orang-orang yang memiliki dedikasi tinggi untuk menghasilkan SDM yang ahli di bidang ilmu administrasi sehingga mampu berkontribusi demi kemajuan bangsa. Dia UPI membuka berbagai ruang-ruang keilmuan di bidang ilmu administrasi. Di antaranya adalah ilmu administrasi publik dan ilmu administrasi bisnis. Keduanya memiliki sub-sub keilmuan yang membentuk beberapa program pendidikan yang telah mencetak lulusan-lulusan yang kompeten dan kredibel di bidang keilmuan masing-masing. Melalui evaluasi dan juga peningkatan mutu yang terus-menerus dilakukan, Bia UB diharapkan selalu menjadi lembaga pendidikan ilmu administrasi yang berkualitas dan dipercaya oleh masyarakat. Tata kelola keuangan dan sumber daya di Fakultas Ilmu Administrasi Universitas Brawijaya dilaksanakan secara terstruktur dengan menjadikan data sebagai landasan pengalokasian kebutuhan yang mendukung terselenggaranya proses pendidikan yang optimal. 
di samping mahasiswa dipersiapkan sebagai insan akademis yang menguasai dengan baik pembelajaran di kelasnya terhadap teori-teori yang diberikan para dosen kami juga melakukan pengembangan karakter atas minat bakat yang dipunyai oleh mahasiswa It is my dream to complete my study in the administrative field Faculty of Administrative Science, University of Brawijaya has become a good choice In addition to the quality and good learning experience Graduate output has high employment opportunities to compete globally. The learning activities are delivered creatively and innovatively by the lecturer so students can get real learning experience to provide their close a picture of professional work. And I think this experience really helps students to shape their attitudes as the main factors in the world of work. Excellencies, distinguished guests, participants, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, everyone. We are delighted to welcome you to the international webinar of Faculty of Administrative Science of Universitas Brawijaya, Indonesia, where we'll talk about the disruption in education regarding how the current technology may affect the teaching and learning process and educational management. I am Aditya Chaya Prawita Wulan, who will be the Master of Ceremony for today. Which we respect, Dean of Faculty of Administrative Science of Universitas Brawijaya, along with the officials and staff, the head, and also the of Education Administration Program of Faculty of Administrative Science of Universitas Brawijaya, professors and lecturers of Faculty of Administrative Science of Universitas Brawijaya, along with the honorable guest speakers, and last but not least, the general participant from all over the countries. The aim of this program is to explore the profound impact of technology and education, highlighting both the opportunities and also the challenges it present. We will exchange knowledge and ultimately contribute to the advancement of technology in this digital age throughout the webinar. But before that, ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to read the agenda for today. The first agenda is the opening session, and then we'll listen to the Indonesia National Anthem followed by the welcoming address or remarks to officially open this webinar. And afterwards, there'll be a photo session before we jump into the main agenda for today. There'll be a presentation from our keynote speaker first before we go to the parallel session of this webinar. There'll be a question and answer session after all, all the speaker present their material for today. And last is the closing session. Okay, so without further ado, let's listen to the Indonesian National Anthem first, and all participants are expected to be conductive throughout the song.
Thank you for the coordination. Now, we're going to listen to Dr. Ainul Hayat, MSE, as the Head of Education Administration Program of IA UB. To Bapak Ainul, the present time are all yours. Thank you. The Honorable Dean of Faculty of Administrative Science, Winter Sudawijaya, our speakers, the committee, all participants, and all the general audience. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good evening, everybody. I stand before you today as the head of the educational administrative study program, filled with great pleasure and participation as we kick off the highly anticipated event, if we see 2023. Our theme for this year's I visit is disruption in education, how current technology may affect the teaching and learning process and educational management. This year marks the third installment of the event since 2021, initiated by my predecessor, Bapak Dr. Hermawan. The purpose of this event is to be a forum for academicians and practitioners in the field of education in general and educational administration in particular to share knowledge from each other perspective. We made this event international as we want to have to know how education is developed and managed in other countries as compared to our home country, Indonesia. Thus, to make it happen, we have invited several speakers from different countries for today. As a matter of fact, Dr. Ethel was our main speaking during the first I visit back in 2021, then accompanied by a joint class format in 20 and, uh, 2022, collaborating with Tarlac Agricultural University of Philippines. Ladies and gentlemen, I can report to you that we have more than 500 participants from at least uh, 10 countries from Southeast ASEAN and from other regions. We are so happy to welcome all of you in our humble event. And so we thank you for your participation and may this event bring you more knowledge than before. That's all I can deliver to you today. Thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Bapak Ainu, for the opening speech. Moving on, we're going to listen to the Dean of Faculty of Administrative Science of Universitas Brawijaya to officially open the seminar. To Associate Professor Andi Fefta Wijaya, PhD, the time and place are all yours. Hi, thank you. Can you hear my voice? Okay. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat siang. Salam sejahtera untuk kita semua. Uh, Magandang hapon. The Honorable Dr. Ethel Agnes Pasqua Valenzuela who acts as the advisor of Asians on the future of education at the ASEAN Secretariat. And the speakers of this event, uh, first, uh, Dr. Thompson uh, Olu Juwon from Lagos State University of Education, Nigeria, and Dr. Khair uh, in Olive Oliver, from Tarlac Agriculture, uh, uh, Agricultural University, Philippines. And also Mr. Zohaib Hassan Sain from Pakistan and Dr. Rike from Universitas Brawijaya, Indonesia. And Vice Dean, Head and Secretary of Public Administration Department and also uh, Dr. Ainul Hayat as the Head of Educational Administration Study Program, along with all the committee. 
participant from uh, different countries and all uh, the general audience. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon from Indonesia. First of all, I would like to deliver my gratitude to Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, God Almighty, who have met, met us all attending one of our annual international events today. Secondly, as the Dean Faculty of Administrative Science, I would like to welcome you all to our country, to our campus to virtually. Ladies and gentlemen, in the digital age, we find ourselves in the world of education is undergoing a profound transformation. The rapid advancement in technology have influenced every aspect of our lives, and education is certainly no exception. As educators and administrators, it is imperative that we embrace this disruption and understanding how it impacts the teaching and learning process, as well as the management of educational institution. EFICIT 2023 provides us with a unique uh, opportunity to explore the potential of technology in, in receiving education. Throughout uh, the course of this event, we will delve into the myriad ways in which current technologies and are revolutioning classrooms, creating new learning and environments, and redefining the rules of both educators and uh, learners. We will also examine the challenge and opportunity that come hand in hand with this technological wave. As educators and administrators, it is our duty to ensure the integration of technology in education is done with carefully thought and consideration. We must address concern of equity, privacy, and digital literacy. Our collective efforts can pave the way of for an inclusive and sustainable educational system that prepares our students for challenge of the futures. Throughout EFICIT 2023, we have gathered speakers from across the world who will share their insights, experiences, and best practices. Together, we will explore the fast potential of technology in education and identify strategy to navigate the ever-changing landscape of educational management. Uh, by the end of this event, I hope we will have gained valuable insights, build new connections, and laid the groundwork for a future where technology empowers us to shape a brighter and more inclusive educational landscape. Thank you for joining us today, and I wish you all a fruitful and enriching experience at EVC 2023. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Thank you, Pak Andi, for officially opening this webinar. Right now, we'll hold a photo session, so to both deans as well as participants as all are welcome to take a position. And please turn on your camera. Thank you. For the committee, the comment will be from me. Okay, for the first one. Um. One, two, three. Okay, one more time, please. One, two, three. Okay. Thank you for your cooperation. Jumping onto the main session, let's we all listen to the first speaker for today. They will start our main session before the parallel session. Dr. Ethel is an education advisor of ASEAN on the future of education ISCC research and development platform. She was also the first female director of the CMO secretariat, which then represents CMU in the UNESCO high-level steering committee. 
Sherpa and Education 2030 SDG Steering Committee. To Dr. Ethel Agnes Pascua Valenzuela, the next 15 minutes is all yours. Very good day to all from Bumi, Korea. First of all, I wanted to congratulate Universitas Prajuaya and all of you for the successful event today. Thank you for inviting me to provide a brief lecture on the theme, education disruptions and the impact of technology on the teaching and learning process. As we all know, when the pandemic broke in, it affected 1.6 billion learners all over the world for an average of 26 and sometimes speaking 80 weeks in some countries. About 24 million students may never return to school. And according to UNESCO, globally, students could lose $17 trillion in lifetime earnings and income, which actually represents 14% of today's GDP. Aside from the issues of access, learning loss is also a big concern. The pandemic gave us crisis of quality, and many children, including those who are enrolled in schools, are not acquiring basic literacy skills. In some low- and middle-income countries, the share of 10-year-old children who could not read and understand a simple text was as high as 57%. And sometimes they reported that it already increased to 80%. So this is not just a crisis of learning. We see the pandemic as a crisis of relevance. The education system that we provide may no longer fit the purpose. That's why today we're here to revisit the disruptions, the changes, and the future of education shaping us. I believe that we must all together work to share the knowledge the science, the innovation to shape the sustainable future that's ahead of us. So let me briefly walk you through the future of education. I know that you are all excited as I am in defining the future of education. So let me share my screen and allow me to briefly walk you through in this future of education. The biggest challenge in our region is that some schools are still doing education 1.0. But few of us are talking about why don't we learn education 2.0? Some countries have planned ahead. They're in education 3.0. But the world and the future of work is already on education 4.0. Where are our teachers? Where are our learners in this regard? Are we in 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and even further? Looking at 1.0, before the pandemic, some countries are still in this situation when learners are all receptacles of knowledge. They receive knowledge and information. And sometimes it's a passive learning. The teacher dominates all instructions. However, because of the advancement in technology, some schools have shifted already to 2.0. Use of computers, iPads in schools, we can see that. And there are few project-based and inquiry learning being used by the teachers. Of course, we have presence of social media. Sometimes we're using Facebook, sometimes we're using Twitter, and all materials, blogs, web tools, wikis, are made available. If you are in this, then you are an educator 2.0. However, the teacher there, first in education 1.0, is the knowledge sharer in 2.0, is a facilitator. The teachers are facilitators. But in 3.0, learners are connected, they're creators as well, and constructivists. Learners can also be content producers. They can develop their TikTok. They can develop their learning materials. They can contribute to the teaching of the teacher. And educators, they are the resource guide. 
this is why it's important for us to understand that now the web you know the world wide web is also influencing and is also becoming our curriculum so if we look at the phases of change you now before the pandemic that many schools are still in 1.0 teachers they are dominating the classroom and they are mostly in the schools brick and parents are there providing all the support and some do not even have computers and at the end of their class at the end of their schooling they are like assembly line workers but 2.0 is co-creating education they're already learning about digitalization teachers and students learn together they progressivist and some classes are held online just like this one and half of the class may be some of the lessons are still in classroom so it's like a hybrid approach and the teachers well we require as well the licensed professionals they use open source but in education 3.0 it's really reinventing education the teaching and learning you can learn anytime anywhere and we're all connected teacher to student student to student student to teachers people to technology they're all important in teaching and everywhere we can have access to internet in cafe in the city in the park bowling alleys and bars and workplaces parents also are co-creators they are lifelong learners they contribute to education so in 3.0 everybody and everywhere we can learn so the wide diffusion of e-learning during the pandemic allowed the schools to transform themselves now we are always remembering that there are small small webinars micro credentials needed massive open online courses abound there's also a growing interest on teacher-centered approaches local and regional collaboration you know you can have teachers coming from all over the world just like now and together we can work to find information just the time we need it Ooh. why do we have 3.0 now because of the increasing use of information in our life in school and other social purposes we use online virtual spaces some of my students they submit assignments in facebook messenger or in viber so we are now redefining teaching and learning because of the widespread of technology personal computers the emergence of web 2.0 yeah, podcasts can be source of learning e-learning platforms free and open softwares are also changing teaching and learning of education happened already from 1.0 2.0 3.0 and now we are in 4.0 from lectures and memorization we go to internet enabled learning knowledge producing co-creating knowledge and innovation producing education so the shift is very fast just because of digitalization and the pandemic we need to reimagine education. We need the future of education in our mindset. We need the education space that looks for innovative solutions and using impactful learning and teaching. Together, we can address all the disruptions and we can share better education together. So what can we see as the future of education or the education 4.0? At other cases, they say education 2030 or 2050 even. We are in different levels of development. We see more connected learning. Learning that is provided by digital media, more easily linked from home, schools, community, peer context of learning. We also see intergenerational connections based on different levels of exposure and capacities of our learners we say that there is also an intelligent learning space with the disruptive technologies we can freely enhance the educational system and actually the education 4.0 brought by the pandemic completely transformed the way the education sector functions by putting learners at the center and making the entire student-centric process of learning this is really a very good development in education 
I would like to say that 4.0 or the future of education is learning anytime, anywhere. We are all lifelong learners. Classrooms can be anywhere and anytime. Students can be working on projects together using technology and education in the future will really be technology based. So now we have this issue of generative AI, chat, GPT. We see also a lot of information can be generated by artificial intelligence. And this will also affect learning, teaching. All the teachers should be well versed on the AI. So in the Transforming Education Summit, which was hosted by UN in September in New York, they talk about re-emphasizing how learners would learn. They need to learn. They need to live together. They have to learn to do, to make use of skills. We need to upgrade the skills, re-skills, and learning to be, to instill the values for a sustainable future that, you know, at the end of the day, you become what you want to become because this was emphasized in your classes. Transforming Education Agenda by UN ensures a learning environment to support the development of learners. We want the teachers who can transform themselves and become agents of change. And we need to harness digital revolution for public common good and invest more invest more equitably and more efficiently in education. That's why these are all what we are currently doing in transforming education in our region and the world. And there are action tracks on how we can change teaching and learning. First, provide an inclusive, equitable, safe, and healthy schools. Second, Try to bring learning and schools for life, for work, and sustainable development. Third, invest on teachers. Develop teaching that, you know, is relevant and improve the teaching profession. Make use of digital learning and transformation and invest in financing of education. So I think... These are very good action tracks, but we still have challenges. Some are still having the effect of COVID-19. Some could not change curriculum right away. It takes time to you know, develop a curriculum. Like in Indonesia, you have emancipated curriculum now. Others are still developing their new curriculum. And we need to see the demand for education throughout life of scaling, upgrading. And please take note that we are in a planet where we experience a lot of ecological disruptions, rising temperatures, all of these, these strain our very own planet. And we only have one planet. So we need to green education so that learners will have capacity, the knowledge, the skills, the values, and attitudes to promote greening education. So we say that the pandemic has affected learning. Learning loss is there. And there is also slow growth to early childhood. Early childhood was the one which was really affected during the pandemic. And of course, we always think about climate impact on education and changes in the future of work. Many of our labor markets are now shifting to digitalization and green industries. And our graduates are not prepared for green industries. What is this? They don't know yet. We thus recommend that we promote the following, safe and inclusive learning environments, embrace collaborative teaching, try to change classroom learning, reform lessons and timetables, allow flexibility across the school system, and ensure that assessment is also relevant and purposeful. For teaching, we need to invite talented candidates to be teachers. This is always the concern. Whenever there is a low achievement, we say, teachers, teachers, teacher quality. So why don't we improve their salary and pay? Why don't we dignify their working conditions? Why don't we preserve teacher economy and create a better pathway for them to be a good teacher, to be a school leader, or to be a good researcher in education? We also need to invest in initial teacher education make professional development very responsive and relevant, and prepare a curriculum 
that enhances all throughout from basic higher and to lifelong learning so for teachers we need to apply cooperative pedagogies we also need to personalize students learning recognize teachers as reflexive practitioner that we always do reflection and we also co-create knowledge or we even are the knowledge producer let us operate schools as a learning organization that we learn every day and promote a culture of research and innovation and development and let us prepare teachers for further disruptions with this i would like to say that you are in the right track in talking about disruptions in the future of education i'm very happy that you are all coming together and learning from one another. This is really what we envision. So from uh, Korea here, talking about future of education, thank you for inviting me and I wish you have a very good day. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Dr. Ethel Agnes Pascua for the speech. On to the parallel session, it will be moderated by Bapak Taufik Akbar Al-Fajri, who is the head of the Language Lab, as well as a lecturer of Administrative Education at Faculty of Administrative Science of Universitas Brawijaya. To Bapak Taufik, the time and place is all yours. Okay, thank you, MC, for your introduction. <clears throat> okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to IVC. 2023 our theme for today is disruption in technology how current technology may affect teaching and learning process in educational management okay uh, today we have four amazing speakers from four different countries uh, there are three uh, expert in theories and also one expert in practice okay <clears throat> Before I go to the main session, parallel section, I will talk about rules in this parallel session. The first one is all of the participants are not allowed to open their mic during the sessions because we want to have a good coordination between speakers and moderators. And the, the last rules is question and answer will be held in the last session after the last speaker talk so if there is any question and answer you can chat write your question in the chat then i will try to translate to english it's okay if you want to talk in bahasa but i cannot talk in other language i'm sorry okay before without further ado let's go to the first speaker the first speaker for today is mr Associate Professor Olujuan Olutula Thompson. Okay, Mr. Uh, Tola, can you hear me? Okay, same. Still mute. I'm sorry, uh, the, the mic is still on mute, Mr. Tola. Okay, good morning from Lagos, Nigeria. Can you hear me, Taufik? Okay. Good morning, Mr. Tola. Okay, how are you? Happy to be here. I want to thank the organizers. Okay. For uh, the, right now in Nigeria is about 7 a.m., right? Yes, yeah. it's 7 a.m. in Nigeria. <laughs> yeah, in, in Indonesia, we have GMT plus 6, while in Seven. Nigeria, we have GMT plus 1. Mm. So we have about five hour different times okay uh, before mr tola present uh, the material for today i will read a short biography about mr tola uh, mr tola is uh, <clears throat> born on agboa ikosi and then uh, his educational history on 2010 and 2015 doctoral degree on university of johannesburg rsa Master degree in Lagos State University, Ojo, and Lagos State Hall of Education on 1986 to 1992. Wow. 
Okay, Mr. Tola is also senior lecturer and doctor of education leadership and management at Department of Educational Management, Lagos State University of Education in Oto Ijenakin, Lagos, Nigeria. Okay, without further ado, Mr. Tola. Time is yours. Uh, okay, thank you so much, uh, Tariq. I want to appreciate you for this. I can I share my screen now. Okay, sure. Uh, as a reminder, you have 20 minutes, Mr. Tola. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. I want to thank the organizers for the opportunity given to me to be here this morning to talk about managing school in the technology era, the role of school leaders. When I was given the opportunity to talk, I decided to talk to Tofik or somebody that I will not be able to do the presentation because at the moment we are carrying out a study on managing school in a telecom in the use of ICT by school leaders. But he said I should just go ahead. And I said, okay, that, that would be wonderful. I want to thank you once again for uh, sharing my thoughts on managing schools in a technology area, the role of school leaders. Oh. Uh, this morning, I want us to, I want to look at, I want us to start a conversation concerning the role of school leaders in a technological area. What are the roles of school leaders? Are they prepared for the role in this technological area? Do they have the capacity and the capability does the technical materials needed support, are they available? That's what I will be, that's the conversation that we'll be having. I will also be looking at the role of technology use in the classroom. What are the benefits of using technology? There was a study that we carried out some time ago on a co project in Lagos, when the government decided to introduce uh, technology into the classroom. I will, be, I will be sharing one or two things about the study on, on, uh, with participants. From there, I will be able to look at the concept of technology leadership, the standard for educational administrators, what are the strategies that the educational leader need to do in this technological area, and then have a little bit of conclusion. When the pandemic started, the whole world was not ready. School leaders were not ready. School leaders did not know what and what to be done because it had not happened in their lifetime. And they do not have a kind of experience on how to manage schools in that area. I, as a person, I'm, 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 I'm not a digital native, I'm an immigrant. It was when the pandemic started that I started using the LMS. I, I did not know how to use the LMS because I was not using it. I was involved in the traditional mode of teaching and learning. And when I became the head of the department, and because of the pandemic, we, I, we started using technology to do one thing or the other. And we started building our, our, our knowledge and understanding of how to use uh, technology in the classroom. Well, David Wallock, is one of the promoters of technology in classrooms and in schools. He said that everybody need technology. Teachers need technology because it's the pen and paper of our time. It is the lens through which we explain much of our world. Exactly. And if you look at it, technology is a tool that will make teachers to be more meaningful in class and engage students alike. Technology provides Opportunities, limitless opportunities for teachers. It provides more information. It provides a kind of a platform for people to uh, discuss and interact much more than when we're in the traditional mode of teaching and learning. Secondly, technology is changing the schools at the moment is changing people at the moment. And uh, look at what we are doing now. You are in, in Indonesia and I'm in Lagos and we are communicating. And more than 500 people all over the world are, are tuned to what we are saying. That's the power of technology. If we use technology very well, 
it will enhance much more and bring the world to a borderless society. Very, very important. What are the importance of technology in schools? Like I said in my opening address, that the 21st knowledge economy has made technology to be the backbone and the heart of human daily lives. Technology has, is revolutionizing the way we talk, the way we interact based on what happened at COVID-19. Like I said, the integration of technology into teaching and learning will enhance teaching quality and delivery. It will provide limitless opportunities for both staff and students. It will help students to learn at their own pace. It will help uh, them to- Sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Tola. Can you make uh, your presentation become full screen because some of the audience cannot see it in full screen? Okay, what do you say? Uh, can okay. you make your presentation become full screen? Okay. Can you see it now? Um, it's still on the PowerPoint, but uh, you have to change it in the presentation mode. Okay. I, it's blocking me from putting the... Okay. Can you see it now? Yeah, press F5, it will uh, go to the projection mode, F5. I should, F5. Uh, when you enter the, yes. uh, the, like the presentation mode, you have to share the other screen, not this one, but the presentation mode screen. Slide okay. <laughs> Well, slide show screen. Slide share, slide show button. Slide show button on on the bottom of the yes. your... Okay, slide show to any any click from current slide. Yeah, you can click from current slide. Yes, now that one uh, on the left corner, on the top left corner. Yeah, you can click from current slide. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, can you still get it? Can you see it now? Click slide show. You can click yes. slide show, slide show, and I've, then I've, I've done that. Yes. From current slide. Current slide. Yes, I've clicked the current slide. From current slide. From yes. current slide. Yes, this is the current slide. Yes, no, you can you click the from current slide. Slide show and click from current slide. Okay. Okay, okay. okay uh, just go on, maybe uh, it's, right now the, the ladder, the font is big, maybe it's better. Okay, please continue, Mr. Tola. Sorry to interrupt. My screen share is paused. Uh, just continue, please, because we don't okay. have... Shall I go ahead? Yeah, yes, yes. Go on. Okay, I I wanted to show the project, the Eco Exec project, uh, done by the government of Lagos State on how to introduce technology into the classroom. And at the end of the day, when we did the study.
my screen is paused and I can go ahead now. Yeah, sure, you can go on. Please go on. Okay. Okay, like I said, there was a study organized by the Lagos State Government on how to integrate technology into the classroom. And before it was introduced, teachers and school leaders were trained on how to use this app. I wanted to show the app in my presentation. In our study, we now found out that teachers were very, very happy in using technology in the classroom. It helped them with the attendance. It also let them monitor students and the school leaders also monitor the teachers. And at the end of the day, their KPI is also monitored. Teachers were very, very happy that they can use this kind of technology in the classroom. For school leaders to use the technology in the classroom, the ICTE, International Standard for Technology Education, has come up with a kind of a, a guideline. Can you, can you, this is the co-share project. Farid, can you see it now? Hello? Yes, yes, I can see it. Yes. So like I said, the eco exec project was used by the government of Lagos State to bring technology into the classroom. Our research shows that the introduction of the technology has brought a new way, novel way of teaching and learning and managing schools. The technology has made teachers to be abreast of innovations in their subject area. And it reduces teachers in writing lesson notes and helps students in critical thinking in this knowledge 21st century environment. The ICT has come up with a standard that teachers need to use in order for them, school leader, in order for them to be abreast of what they are expected to do. These standards are into four areas. That for you to be a good administrator in the knowledge central environment, you must be visionary. You must have a vision. And, and also in digital aid learning, you must have the data in learning culture. And at the end of the day, excellent in professional practice. You must be able to support professional development of teachers, like the first speaker has said. In this knowledge economy, there must be professional development of teachers. You must be able to be ethical. What are those things that is needed to be done when you are using the internet? What are those things you are not expected to do or to do? Very, very important. All these standards are very, very good for teachers. But for, for academic purpose, what are the concepts of technology leadership? So many authors have written on technology leadership. But for our own presentation this morning, we are also going to look at just two or three things. What, are, what, does, what is the concept of technology leadership? Uh, it is a covers all action using technology in education, including organizational choices, policy, and technology implementation. In technology leadership, there are two things that is needed the use of ICT and the ability to use technology in the classroom. Because it is a virtual relationship of influence in which this new highly adaptive field of knowledge affect numerous daily interactions across profession, education, and training. And when you are in, in the virtual world, what are those things that you need to do? Very, very important. It entails both the use of ICT, leadership, and management for the educational institution. Like ICT has said, there's what we call systemic improvement. You need to continuously enhance schools' leadership technology because technology is coming out every now and then. Like the first speaker said, AI is the in thing now when some schools are uh, talking about ChatGPT, whether they need to regulate it or not. On digital citizenship, school administrators serve as role models and help students to comprehend the social, 
ethical and legal implications of a changing digital culture. All students should be able to have access to digital tools and resources to satisfy their needs. The whole essence of integration of ICT into schools is for student academic performance, is for students to be what they want to be, to have knowledge about what is happening in and outside their environment. What are the strategies to foster technological environment in schools? These, are, these strategies are unexhausted. I said the first thing that needs to be done is that there must be a strategic planning in schools based on our study. There needs to for manpower resources. There needs to be training and effective communication. There must be a kind of a team player. It's not only one person that can do it. People must come together to solve problems. And also a leader should have some leadership and responsibility to all stakeholders. If you, if you use technology in the classroom, there must be responsibility. It's something that everybody in the school must agree on and they must be carried along. That's why you need effective communication. The second one I've mentioned here, another strategy is, is that the acceptance of technological info, innovation. School leaders must be ready to promote and accept technological innovations in their school. They must be aware of new innovation that could benefit teaching and learning and the challenges it portends. Before you deploy technology in your school, like I said, there must be manpower, there must be resources. The technical resources must also be there in case there is a kind of a breakdown. From, from the research we, we, car we carried out on the core we found out that one of the challenges they have is a form of the technical support because the technical support was not really coming as I went deep. Like I said, the, the chap GPT, like I mentioned initially, the researcher have enumerated his merits and demerits, and they are now calling for a policy in integration in schools. For you to integrate technology in your school, as a school leader, you must align with the mission and vision of that school. And that vision and mission of that school must align with the educational goal of the country. If you want to deploy technology in your classroom, there must be adequate budgetary provision for the necessary infrastructure that is needed to enhance a seamless integration of technology. This is very, very important. You must also be able to put in place a kind of a technical backup to attend to issues promptly because technology, when you are using it, anything could happen at any time. How do you come about it? How do you solve the problem? How do you ensure that the, the technology you are using is going on without any problem? These are some of the things that you need to do. Another thing that we need to do in the classroom is that there must be continuous training because the world is changing every now and then. Before two, maybe three years ago, nobody knew about AI. Nobody knew about chat GPT. But now there must be training, continuous training, professional development on how to use this uh, teaching, uh, this technology to improve teaching and learning. And you can also create a professional learning community where people learn from one another and offers a kind of support to, for each other in order for them to uh, learn from each other. Another thing that is very, very important is that after COVID-19, there's the issue of ethical policy and guidelines. Because I know that some, some countries in Europe came with a policy, digital policy on how to protect privacy and other things. All these things must be able to be put in place. There should be a kind of a collaboration with all stakeholders on how to foster digital citizenship and creating online safety and parents to be to be digital citizens. This will enable stakeholders to address issue of cyber bullying, online privacy, and digital ethics. Another strategy that leaders could put in place is quality assurance, ability to measure, ability to evaluate ability to see what is working and what is not working. What, is need, what needs to be done is very, very important when it comes to the strategies that leader needs to put in place. In my conclusion, because of my time, the management of school in the digital era requires a competent, resourceful, and visionary leader based on the complexities associated with leadership in school. Leadership in school in the 21st century is different from 19th century because there are a lot of strategies, there are a lot of so many things that's coming into teacher leadership that is not 
that, that were not planned. So when leaders embrace and accept some of these strategy mentioned, they can create an advanced technological teaching and learning environment that is conducive and safe, so that they thereby empowering students for academic achievement and then preparing them for future challenges in the 21st learning century environment. Thanks for listening to me. Thank you for your undivided attention. I hope you have learned something new. Thank you very much, Mr. Tola, for your presentation. Uh, Thank you. Before we go on, uh, maybe this is unrelated question, but I as have familiar name with your name. Uh, there's an NBA players, legend one, Hakim Olajuwon. Do you know it? <laughs> <laughs> no, Hakim. That one is Hakim Olajuwon. The oh, basketball player in Boston Rockets, yes, years ago. You have similar name. My name is Olu Juwa. That means oh, that God is greater. Okay. Yeah, man has to do with God. That God is greater than anybody. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Mr. Tola has already implemented in Lagos. Lagos is a most populated city in Nigeria. Right? Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Tola. Thank you so much, Tariq. Yeah. We'll go to the next presenter. <clears throat> the next presenter will be Associate Professor Dr. Claire and A. Olivares from Philippines. Yeah. Miss Claire, can you hear me? Yeah, you're still on mute. Yeah. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, in Philippines, we have the same time, right? GMT plus seven. Let me just fix my audio. Um, it seems that I'm having some audio problems here. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Can I um, share my slides now? Okay, uh, wait a minute before you... Okay. So, I will read your <coughs> professional summary. Okay. So, Miss Square, Miss Square, Mrs. Claire and A. Olivares is a professor from TAU, Talak Agricultural University. Right now, she is a dean of College of Education. So, uh, Miss Claire is dynamic educator and instructional leader with more than 20 years of relevant experience in teaching, research, extension, and supervise. Committed to quality and relevant education, LED initiative in the transition of the AU to flexible, flexible learning. Okay, Miss Claire, time is yours. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, your speaker is still on mute. I'm sorry. Okay, okay yeah. can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, sorry. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and men. And, and at the onset, let me express my gratitude for the opportunity to speak before you today and share my short lecture that focuses on our theme, how current technology may affect teaching and learning and educational management. I want to thank Brawijaya University for having me again. So last year I was with you for the IUVC uh, 2022 and I talked about instructional leadership. I want to commend Brawijaya University for this initiative and I congratulate you in advance in, for, this, uh, for its success. So this afternoon, I will speak about one of the most important aspects of educational management, and that is management of the curriculum. I see some similarities with my presentation with the 
the first uh, presenter, but then anyways, um, uh, let's just push this through. Uh, let us, uh, we will walk through about the different domains of curriculum management, some ideal attributes of curriculum managers, the crucial role in achieving educational goals, as well as in transforming their schools. There will be no attempt to discuss specialized apps or technology, as we will be dealing more on the role of um, curriculum managers and how we will uh, fit the different practices, um, especially in the 21st century. So finally, we'll be looking as uh, we were looking into how these practices may be integrated in the curriculum standards, practice, and assessment. So we'll start with a very basic um, definition of educational management. And, um, and uh, as we all know, educational management is concerned with the operation of uh, educational organization and is concerned with planning, organizing and directing activities in schools, um, managing uh, the human and material resources, resources such that uh, it is ensured that we um, use them effectively and efficiently. And with the overall uh, goal of accomplishing the school's um, objectives. So educational managers are actually tasked or expected to manage the curriculum instruction, finance, personal students, uh, school community relations, as well as physical and material res re um, resources. But I would like to uh, zero in with this, um, uh, this task, the management of curriculum and instruction for my talk this afternoon. Um, uh, curriculum management is fundamentally concerned with effective teaching and learning. So it is it consists of planning what students are expected to learn, directing how this will be learned, evaluating whether or not it was learned, and seeking ways to improve um, student uh, learning. In short, it primarily concerns itself with what should be taught, how should it be taught, and what is the impact of teaching. Later, we'll be um, reviewing that, and we will try to map it out to the different um, standard practices on technology integration in curriculum management. <clears throat> so looking into uh, the nature of curriculum management, we'll see that curriculum management um, is cooperative and collaborative as well. It is comprehensive, it's systemic, it's systematic, and of course, <clears throat> it is uh, ultimately purposive. It is cooperative in the sense that uh, it does not take the, um, the role of just the principal. It takes the it takes teamwork, it takes working together um, for teachers and for the principal to the different stakeholders like the teachers, parents, the community, and the students. Let me just excuse for a while, I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> <clears throat> I'm sorry for that. I lose my boy. It's <clears throat> fine. Yeah. So uh, we're talking about the nature of curriculum management. It's cooperative. It it involves group effort. It covers a whole range of curriculum process from its inception up to its transformation. If it needs to be transformed, uh, if it's need, if it needs to be terminated after some some assessment data, uh, you found out not, uh, that it's not effective. So there are many curricular decisions that we ought to do as leaders. So it's embedded in the system basically because curriculum is the be all and end all of the school system. And it's systematic because it involves processes and procedures like how would you do um, appraisal of teachers? How would you do classroom observation? How would you um, align? Uh, the curriculum to the general goals of education. And ultimately, it's purposive. It is basically um, set there to achieve the goals and objectives for the curriculum. So curriculum managers must be able to work with other principals. They should be able to collaborate. They should be able to 
share their commitment. As the first speaker uh, uh, shared a while back, she had the, the curriculum manager should have vision, okay? Must have an organizational vision because this vision will guide the school into the future and the ability to articulate this vision. It's not enough that you have vision. The vision is just but a dream if you do not have any specific strategy or action plan to, uh, to put it into fruition, right? So, and lastly, curriculum managers must also be um, knowledgeable and skillful in management. And also, um, so that, as I've said, this vision becomes a reality. So, Curriculum managers are, uh, there's are some example characteristics of curric good curriculum managers. Good curriculum managers must be able to provide the necessary resources so that the school academic goals can be achieved. Like for example, providing toolkit for, for teachers, um, um, curating um, resources, um, choosing books to be stored in the library, et cetera, okay? evaluating um, content materials to be included in the curriculum. So managers should also be futures thinking. It has to be future focused because we have to remember that the students that we have today are in, will be citizens of the future, the future world. So we have to have at least somehow uh, a vision of how the future will look like because it is in this future that our students will operate. It is in this future that our students will work, okay? So that, um, yes, we have a visible presence. So also, as I've said a while back, um, curriculum managers should be, um, should have policy knowledge and management skills. And of course, a, curric a curriculum manager should be a good communicator, okay? When we shift from face-to-face -face classes to our online, to our flexible learning, the, uh, communication has become a challenge, okay? So um, curriculum um, managers, curricul uh, communication is an integral part of communication management. It is through communication that we are able to effectively communicate our vision. We're able to encourage support from our colleagues and address our concerns effectively. Now to achieve learning goals and objectives, the curriculum must be managed effectively. As articulated in the National Policy Board for Educational Administration, school heads are expected to foster safe, caring, and supportive school learning commun uh, communities and promote rigorous curricula, instructional, and assist assessment systems, okay? Um, curriculum managers is usually tasked with um, the principal for the basic education, department heads, and deans for higher, um, higher uh, education. So why do we need uh, technology integration? One area that has increasingly taken attention, especially during the pandemic, is the role of technology in achieving the learning goals and objectives in the school curriculum. How well does technology integration able to produce the kind of graduates that we want? Do we need to integrate technology in the curriculum or do we have to integrate curriculum into the technology? So this is a two-pronged answer that um, actually very uh, controversial. Technology, as we all know, has revolutionized the way we think, work, and play. In the past, our power is associated who, with who has the most land, uh, who holds the capital and machine. But in the advent of the 21st century, power resides now to who holds the knowledge. The age of knowledge explosion ushered by the advances in, com in technology also necessitates a different kind of competencies and skills to manage the vast knowledge systems in the world. And so these changes in the knowledge and power landscapes will perturb all aspects of life, of the, especially the educational system, especially the curriculum. The impact that technology has had on schools has been quite significant and it has changed the way we teach and the way we learn the way we lead, the way we manage. Education institutions acknowledge that we must move with technology changes. And the needs of students also has changed with time and advancement in technology. So the present scenario requires educational institutions to embrace 
the role of technology and to refashion our curriculum. Technology integration is a vital step to help learners change the world that relies on information system and technology, which in turn make our students future ready. What do studies show? Technology integration in the curriculum improves students. Uh, there is a growing body of evidence that technology integration positively affect student achievement and academic performance. When effectively integrated into curriculum, technology tools can extend learning in powerful ways. Technology impacts achievement in content learning area, promotes higher order thinking and problem solving skills, and prepares our students with um, for the workforce. Emphasis on the underlined words when used in collaborative learning methods and when there is effective leadership. Therefore, it implies that for technology integration to succeed, it has to thrive on a collaborative environment um, that is led by an effective leader. Now, technology and integration does not come without challenge. No? Uh, may I encourage the participants to, to share their concerns and problems. If you are a student, what are the problems or concerns you are seeing in my screen? Yes, you see in my screen the challenges in technology integration, yes. But can you add more to this list of in your personal experience as a student, as teachers, as academic leaders, as managers, as administrators? Will you put in the chat box some of the concerns that you have encountered, especially when uh, the pandemic hits the world? I would like to see your um, answers in the chat box. Okay, all of the audience. Is the chat box enabled for the comments? Yes, they are enabled. They are in the chat. So let me just read. Uh, there is some are answering the number. They are identifying the things that are written in the screen as the, their concern. From LNU, budgetary constraint, low internet connection in the Philippines, digital divide in internet connection. So that's access, yes? Finances to cope, yes. That is correct. Political interventions, bureaucracy, that's correct. Please keep it coming. The quality of training. Digital bias and fear of losing out by age. Leap service to funding education. Too much bureaucracy. Yes, Inadequate yes. training. So yes, I see there's a lot, right? Um, no, that's a lot. And you know what? I, I feel you. I feel you. I, I really um, can feel the sentiments of our participants because, you know, um, especially when the pandemic hits, right? Uh, when we are to move quickly, when we are forced to move quickly from to transition from traditional on-site classes to technology-aided instruction. And this has been extra challenging for schools when technology use is sparse or at most basic. And uh, I'd say that it has been challenging for teachers, right? I know you agree with me and students. And it is for me especially challenging for leaders who are expected to lead in the transition, correct? When you yourself, you lead, but you are expected, the people look up to you. What is the solution to this problem? They look up to you, but you yourself, you know that you lack training, you lack, you lack the technical know-how, and um, and you yourself has to learn quickly so that you'll be able to lead the people. You'll have to lead the school into transitioning into flexible learning. It has been, I would like to share that it has been a humbling experience for me. And I know it has been also to you, it has been humbling to you, but be it as it may, we have to embrace the challenge for us to, for us to, you know, to survive, 
you know, we really have to embrace the challenge. We have to learn quickly. We have to get up on our feet and try to empower others the best way we can, right? So it is in this time that I learn to collaborate more, to communicate more. I humble myself to say the things that I do not know. I seek help. I, I sought the help of, of those who are more technically knowledgeable than me. And so if, if there's one beautiful thing that this pandemic taught us, it's, it's to work together, right? is to share our what, whatever we know with each other. And so we, we learn together, right? So that's why uh, we continue to learn, we continue to survive. So the pandemic is almost gone and we're here we are um, still surviving and thriving. So yes, another is this one. Um, in your school, uh, what would you say is the level of technology integration in your school is it sparse so you will see there the description of each level the first level is sparse meaning it's rarely used basic is when it's av available occasionally uh, when it is fairly used on a regular basis it's comfortable and four when it is seamless so seamless is when we use it um daily okay uh, let me see your answers in the chat box again. You may just write one, two, three, or four. Let me see. Three, two, okay, yes. Wow, now how nice to see number three. From the Philippines, three, okay. Well, thank you very much for your participation. So I'm I'm happy to see some of you uh, having comfortable uh, level, but I seldom, I don't know if I've read, have you seen seamless? <laughs> uh, you know, it's far from ideal. Our technology integration is far from ideal, but you know, um, uh, based on the problems that we have in, uh, mentioned uh, uh, earlier, um, I would like to see you in on this, um, more serious problem that I, 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 I think we have to take note as a, a curriculum managers. In, um, in 2003, UNESCO Bangkok conducted a meta-analysis of the state of ICT use in the Asia and Pacific, and they found out uh, some weakness in policy making that led to misallocation of resources, exacerbating the existing lack of resources. Accordingly, um, educational planners bought this technology, uh, they have uh, um, built infrastructures and then later think of the goals. And it's not the other way around, okay? So they had made technology as the end goal of their schools, okay? So um, there were great evidence that point to the fact that ICT use is less effective when the goals for their use are not clearly defined. So we really have to have clear goals, okay? It is imperative to adopt clear goals in technology integration. Do I still have, do I still have time? Uh, we still have time. I don't, is that a message for me? Uh, I don't think so. I think it's just a link. It's just an, an, an audio left open. Yeah, okay. Let me just continue. So the key points that I want to share with you based on the, the sharing that, uh, the, 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 the things I shared with you is that curriculum goals should be the drivers and not the technology. Technology integration is having the curriculum drive technology and not the other way around, okay? The goal should be the technology should just serve as a tool. And leadership is the single most important factor affecting successful integration of technology. And there should be clear policy. Technology is a tool. It cannot compensate for weakness in education policy. So um, lastly, I would like to, uh, 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 earlier, I, uh, curriculum, I shared with you that curriculum management is interested with what to teach how to teach it and how would we know that there has been uh, learning, okay? So I would like to map it out with the uh, International Society for Technology, 
um, in education standards. Um, uh, these are practices in which way we can integrate technology in the curriculum. Okay, so in terms of what to teach, curriculum managers should, um, um, this may involve development of a clear vision for improving learning with technology. It would also include setting goals, which can be made possible by technology. Identifying, uh, it would also involve identifying digital content, as well as learning opportunities that is appropriate, relevant, and culturally responsive. And of course, it, it would also entail managers and teachers um, uh, evaluation and uh, curating and adoption of new digital resources and tools for learning. It's not enough that you just adapt. Sometimes when there are some, you know, um, uh, some companies who wants to present their products, uh, it's not, uh, you should not be very excited. You should be very vigilant. You should be very, you know, careful. You have to keep, what the goal in mind and not just to 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 you know not just to so to show the people that you have this infrastructure but actually they do not have any role in the overall um 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 operation of the school and you will see that it can be maximized the use of that technology can be maximized so it involves evaluating curating and adopting new digital resources and tools for learning and then it would also involve critically examining the sources of online media what, what to teach it focuses on the intent of the curriculum and the content of the curriculum so the all these practices and you also have others that you may want to include. You may do you may do this so that we can uh, integrate technology in our curriculum management practices. Now, in terms of what how to teach, how to teach focuses on the pedagogy as well as organizing uh, the learning experience that we offer our students, and and this may include um, applying pedagogical approaches that is made possible by technology like collaborative uh, strategies, cooperative strategies that may be made more engaging um, by the use of technology. And it also requires establishing, you know, uh, an kind of learning environment that promotes curiosity and critical examination, fosters digital literacy and media fluency. You know, there are many information, um, there are so many information that we have to skim, we have to evaluate, we have to be really very critical as to whether these are true or not. So digital literacy and media fluency is one of the things that we have to you know, develop among our, our students. And then we have to, uh, it also involves development of authentic and active learning experiences. And we use technology to create, adapt and personalize the learning experience. Uh, it may we can also integrate technology by managing um, the digital platforms, making use of technology and student learning strategies in digital platforms. And of course, uh, curriculum must be interested in looking into what is the impact of teaching. As curriculum managers, you would have to see whether or not the efforts have really paid off, right? So you have to see if. At the end of the day, at the end of the unit, at the end of each program, at the end of each curriculum, you are able to produce the graduate that you want to produce. You are able to see your students knowing what they are supposed to know, doing what they are supposed to do, and being what they are supposed to be. So what is the impact of teaching? So in terms of evaluation and assessment, uh, we can make use of technology by designing and implementing a variety of formative and summative assessment that would accommodate learning, learner needs, okay? And uh, you can integrate the use of technology that provides timely feedback to students and inform instruction. And we can also develop learning assessment that provide a personalized, actionable view of a student progress in real time. Okay, there are two minutes left. Okay, I'm on my last slide. In the post-pandemic time, we witnessed the commitment to make technology-aided education accessible and available to all. Of course, there are a lot of work to do. We see our, your answers in the level of uh, technology integration in your school, and we, it's, far from, it's far from ideal. But, um, but the most important, well, it is far from ideal. The most important thing is that the struggle continues. Learning should continue. We must continue. 
in learning because technology does not stop evolving. Okay, before I end, let me leave this with you. So in this 21st century, academic managers, curriculum managers, let us be techy. Let's techy. Let us be T, teachable. Let us seize every opportunity to learn new skills, new information. Let us also be ready to learn, unlearn and relearn. We should be able to promote uh, learning among our teachers also. E, enthusiastic. Academic and curriculum manager should be enthusiastic leader because enthusiasm inspires our teachers. Enthusiasm inspires our students. Genuine, they can see if you really have this genuine interest in their learning. A genuine interest um, um, is actually motivating for our teachers. Okay, we cannot encourage our teachers to be enthusiastic about innovation if we are not enthusiastic ourselves, right? See, collaborative. We have seen how collaboration works best, how technology integration works best when we collaborate. Let's work with others, encourage suggestions. Let us involve our teachers. Let us hear them. Let's hear their concerns, their problems. So, um, you know, so that we are able to minimize resistance. Because if you get people involved, uh, there will be lesser resistance, okay? H is highly committed. Highly committed to what? We have to be highly committed to our vision, to the goals and objectives, because being highly committed makes you make more mindful so that all the efforts that you do are aligned to these goals and you know, um, and you are able to use uh, information data to, 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 to be reflective and to improve your practice. Innovative. Be open with innovation. Let's create. Let's think outside the box. Technology is fast changing and we have to think of innovative ways on how to make teaching, learning, and leading more effective. And lastly, let us be empowering. Create a culture where teachers and learners are empowered to use technology. That is all for my part and thank you for your attention. Good afternoon again. Okay, thank you very much to Assistant Professor Dr. Claire Ann. Uh, let's continue to the third speakers for today. We have uh, Professor Wicke, Estos MSI DPA from Indonesia. Okay, thank you. I can start now. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Uh, hold on. No, yes. Okay. Hold your horses. Okay. Okay, before we start, uh, our beloved secretary of our department, public department. Okay, let me read her uh, biography. Okay, so Ms. Wicke is uh, graduated from Univers Universitas Brawijaya for his bachelor degree and for his master degree, he took uh, Universitas Erlangga you know, on social science and for a uh, doctoral degree, she took a uh, public admission on University of Canberra, Australia. Okay, right now, Ms. Wicke uh, become as the Secretary of Public Administration Department of Faculty of Science, University of Brawijaya. Okay, without further ado, Ms. Wicke, Ms. Wicke, time is yours. Okay, so thank you so much, uh, Mr. Uh, Fajri. Uh, uh, as you uh, as you <laughs> okay, sounds like there's a sounds problem. <laughs> So I can uh, I can share uh, my uh, presentation yes, slide uh, from me, or will be assisting by uh, my colleagues on there. Uh, we can assist you if you want. Okay, then thank you so much. 
Okay, so uh, thank you, Mr. Taufik Fadri, uh, uh, as my moderator uh, for introduce me. So thank you also to all uh, my colleague, uh, my colleague, my uh, colleague uh, as a lecturer in uh, Faculty of uh, Administrative Science in uh, Brawijaya University, and all participants and all guest speakers. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I can learn from you, mom, sir. Uh, and I'm so happy uh, as uh, having me as one of the uh, panelists of this afternoon. So uh, this afternoon, uh, I will uh, talk a little bit about uh, technology in education, particularly uh, what happened in Indonesia applied and practices in Indonesia from the uh, uh, from the perspective of ch uh, challenging challenging and a benefit and I can do by myself or is this from there Mr. Fajri uh, it's up to you Okay then, so uh, maybe slide number three. Yes, okay. So uh, it is it is understandable uh, beside the trends of uh, modern information technology in all areas of uh, human activity. So uh, the process of education is more and more and more paramount uh, and could not be avoided. So that's why today, this afternoon, I would like to discuss and talk uh, on technology in education, particularly in Indonesia, including uh, the policy, the program supporting using uh, technology in education sector. So uh, how technology and or in education is good topic to uh, to be discussed uh, particularly particularly on a norm, normal era normal time because uh, we face some the uh, the outbreaks in uh, the last two years three years uh, ago uh, so uh, technology and education is more getting uh, valuable yeah, valuable because the globalization, okay? So the globalization and modernization is more triggered. Uh, it's more triggered for education sector. And then also education, uh, uh, my, 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 three, uh, my three fellow uh, speakers uh, uh, has, has been uh, informed to us about the importance of uh, using technology in education uh, for teaching and learning process in every school, in every university, maybe in uh, every college. Uh, I also agree about that because, you know, education is a long life activity, okay? So education is a long life activity. Uh, from infancy to maturity, people need to uh, learn, study about uh, something that may be a good, uh, a good way to the future. So that's why uh, uh, technology in education has an important role in learning and teaching process. And also, <clears throat> uh, there are uh, many some needs uh, uh, as a human being uh, use technology as a tool uh, in um, a life activity. But more important uh, nowadays, because uh, the triggering by the uh, the current uh, outbreak situation, and we face uh, since uh, the end of uh, 2019 until 2022, uh, we know about the COVID pandemic. Okay, so uh, next slide, please. Next slide, please. Uh, so COVID-19, COVID-19 uh, uh, could be uh, triggered uh, to use uh, technology remotely as 
uh, something that unexpected, okay? Something unexpected and a shock everyone. And uh, I agree with uh, previous, uh, previous uh, speaker tell us that uh, because the COVID-19 spread uh, can change the way of teaching and learning process. And also I agree about there are something shifted education from traditional to online version, okay? Uh, as many students, okay? As many students, many teaching uh, uh, need to push back, okay? to study or teach from the classroom to uh, back to uh, 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 home. Uh, it means that uh, the process must be done from home. This is creating in, uh, the, the online version. So this is the, uh, the involving of using technology can help, can help, uh, can support and can assist, uh, assist uh, for 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 teaching, or for, sorry, for teacher and also for student. So that uh, could be the rising the importance of technology, uh, technology integration in education. So uh, and also UNESCO uh, reported in 2020 uh, mentioned that the transition from the traditional way to the online version, okay, effective almost half of the student population globally including in Indonesia, including in Indonesia. So uh, uh, before we, we, we discuss a little bit more about uh, the role of technology in education, first we do need to understand what the definition of education. Okay, so please, uh, next uh, slide. So education is about growing and development. Education is grow and development. Ed education is a process in which or by which the knowledge and also the character and also the behavior of the young or the adults according to Raymond are shaped, okay? Are shaped and are modeled. Are shaped and are modeled. Could be true in formal and uh, uh, formal institution. And also the, the education is kind of the passions of human being from infancy to maturity. Okay, understand about the growing up uh, infancy to maturity uh, through the education. Okay, so that's why education is not, is not uh, the cut off, but also continuing activity by human being. And also uh, education is adapted gradually in various ways to physical, social, and spiritual uh, environment. So how about the technology? Okay, so technology is kind of uh, the knowledge of science. It's used in practical and tax that we call technology. And uh, from this, uh, because we try to understand the link between technology and education, there are two concepts in here, technology and education, and versus technology of education. Technology in education uh, versus technology of education. So technology of education is the use of technology to increase, to increase, to enhance the process of learning from curricular implementation, curricular implementation in the schools, in the university, in the vocational institution, institution or, uh, or or so on and so on. And uh, this concept, technology of education, uh, probably many of us uh, 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 understand about the referral as educational technology, educational technology. So how about technology in education? Today I'm talking about uh, more, more little bit, uh, uh, more about technology in education. So technology in education is more focusing on, uh, please, the next slide, please. Technology in education more focus on learning and how technology works, okay? So learning and how technology works. It means that technology can help student or teaching students or sorry, student or teacher learned knowledge inside 
from many uh, assisting material, okay, not only study and in a classroom, but student can understand from the video they watch anywhere, anytime. So I agree with uh, 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 two uh, presenters before me. Uh, they're talking about when we use technology in education, so there are many, uh, no boundaries, okay? No boundaries, okay? Uh, flexibility, because we can study, we can teach uh, from anywhere, from any time. And we can, we can decode, we can decode our material to deliver to students, okay? So, and students in return can learn, can watch, can understand, can read from the uh, assisting technology to uh, understand about the material, about the knowledge itself. So uh, technology in education, uh, including also application of machineries, get this or equipment to improve the quality of education or teaching learning process. So uh, there are one point, no boundaries, okay? No boundaries. Next, next uh, slide please. And uh, what the aspect of technology in education? It is a hardware approach to educational technology. Why? Because using some devices to help us as a lecturer, as a teacher, to deliver uh, material, okay? Through computers, through laptops, maybe sometimes we use uh, mobile phones, okay? For facilitating the education and the learning uh, process. It's kind of using instructional materials, could be audio media could be visual media. This moment, I think it's part of, uh, we use technology uh, in education because I deliver some uh, uh, some material, uh, I deliver some, uh, what is it, uh, uh, knowledge uh, uh, through this, through these devices, okay? So I use audio visual media. Uh, also project uh, projector media and many more okay so aspect of technology in education more 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 uh, getting uh, in person not only in uh, nowadays maybe more maybe could be more developed okay because the advanced technology uh, developed by many industrial uh, can help us to uh, de deliver some uh, uh, lesson to to student okay so how about because uh, i will uh, i will i will like to uh, discuss a little bit more about what happened in indonesia so what happened uh, technology in education applied in indonesia so there are some time uh, uh, next slide, please. There are some types of uh, applied, applied in Indonesia in how technology uh, in education. Uh, we know about there are types, some types, but uh, I just uh, three in here. So we can share about what happened in Lagos, what happened in uh, uh, in Philippines about the, the application of technology in Indonesia in university or in school, but uh, we have a university with technology base, okay? Uh, uh, the famous one is uh, UT, uh, UT, UT, Open University. Yeah, Un uh, Universitas Terbuka. In English, is Open University. And uh, BINUS, yeah, uh, mostly, they use uh, doing uh, online online uh, online activity, yeah. For uh, teaching and uh, learning process, must be doing with online version, okay. Uh, and university, the, the other type is university school college with technology use, okay. Uh, we use technology to assisting in process uh, learning and teaching. But mostly not use uh, online fashion. Sometimes we use a hybrid, uh, or sometimes we use because uh, due to the institutional, like the uh, uh, 
outbreaks uh, spread uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, also uh, education institution with technology use and base, okay, use and base, mostly doing in, uh, uh, in, uh, 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 in COVID-19 pandemic, okay. And uh, the next is, so uh, when look at in how society and government uh, responded to um, unexpected situation like uh, the COVID pandemic in the uh, three, uh, last three years uh, past, uh, uh, government, Indonesian government, uh, through uh, Ministry of Education, uh, set up some programs okay set up some programs the programs is including in a learning program assistant mostly funded by government or uh, training programs uh, training programs uh, with targeted uh, targeted uh, person like teacher or lecturer student or student with disability or school manager okay student with disability um, maybe I can give some example, uh, training program for teacher uh, with uh, student with disability. Uh, there are many uh, development of Braille, uh, Braille uh, application. So uh, the student with the uh, blind uh, can study uh, remotely. Okay, and also uh, Minister of Education of Republic of Indonesia uh, building uh, the some programs targeted for the higher education like uh, collaborative online learning assistance and network uh, based learning innovation. So, uh, what what is the collaborative online learning assistant funded uh, co funded by government and the school or university targeted? Uh, this is the learning together, not only from one school or, or one university, but collaborate with other education institution. Okay, uh, so uh, in Faculty of Administrative Science uh, did a program, uh, we call it uh, PMM. PMM is uh, it's kind of a student exchange. Uh, student from other university, student, uh, student from other university can take one, one or two unit course in uh, my faculty, uh, but uh, they still, uh, they still, uh, the position, I mean, their position still in her, in her and his university. So uh, uh, the online person can apply to, to, uh, to, to create this scheme, uh, the uni, uh, student university, student from other university, not, uh, not join with us uh, physically in, uh, in Malang, in, in my faculty, but still uh, get involved in the uh, learning process uh, in her or his hometown. Okay, so uh, this is a kind of collaborative online learning uh, uh, scheme. And also uh, assisting facilities, okay? Uh, it's kind of a Chromebook for school learning. Chromebook is kind of a type of computer designed uh, to have students in a classroom. Uh, uh, sometimes it's, uh, it's kind of a, a little bit more, what is this, expensive. Uh, but uh, the government, this is not, uh, not applied to uh, Indonesian student, but still kind of a, a pilot project. So not every single school uh, get the access uh, about the Chromebook for school learning, but still some of uh, school in a big city like uh, Jakarta or Surabaya can access this scheme. Okay, and then uh, uh, government support this uh, program. Okay, and also assisting facilities uh, programs, including uh, giving a free uh, ap uh, application into software. Okay, so uh, every single school, yeah, every single school can access this. Okay, uh, next, next. 
so from 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 that from that uh, there are many challenges and benefit in how technology and education applied in our school and our university in Indonesian perspective uh, one is uh, the challenges is independent okay independent more independent and flexible for student or teacher doing activity academically okay by using technology can study everywhere okay okay i agree with uh, a professor uh, before me uh, student can study in parks yes indeed student can study in cafe yes indeed this is about independent okay independent uh, learning for any student Technology can help students to do independent study. Okay, so how about the uh, the the teacher, the lecture? Uh, consequences of the independent activity is required to update teacher and lecture competences. Okay, uh, what are uh, what kind of competences teacher or lecture need to do? Competences on technological and competences on the pedagogical, okay? Uh, to this more requirable, okay? And also the challenges is about facilities. Sometimes still need uh, support from the government, okay? Sometimes, uh, particularly uh, for public school or school in remote area uh, across the Indonesia, uh, still hard uh, to get a uh, facility. So uh, government need to respond uh, in the good way, in the best way, okay? And also uh, perhaps government can have to installing, uh, installing devices that technology can be assessed, assessed uh, uh, every time okay and also uh, the next uh, the next is about financial okay financial state society government can collaborate to support financial okay uh, indonesian government already support with the program to fund technology in education okay through a student through a, a teaching a teacher and uh, many uh, stakeholders and the benefit is the using of technology in education can uh, can get some benefits not only for uh, a student or teaching uh, teacher but also many uh, many stakeholders can can contribute to help okay uh, because the learning process more engaged yeah more engaged more exciting you know particularly for the youngster and keep motivated. Yeah. And the boosting student academic achievement is more self-confident. Okay. Self-confident. As reading material can be downloaded. Okay. As video learning can be watched everywhere. And uh, those can help uh, improve the achievement academically for or for all students. Okay, and also a uh, student collaborate to solve problem via online classroom. Okay. And maybe also student can upload homeworks remotely. So this is many benefits. Yeah. Not only yeah. at this, but more and more. Check it. Okay, more and more and more. So in the end, in the end, some points we can learn from uh, this concept, technology in education is integration technology and education is more paramount in the future. I agree with that, okay? And society and government can support to some delivery program to all stakeholders involved is uh, important also. So I think uh, I think is, I hope this uh, material I share with you all is, uh, can enhance your uh, lot insight and knowledge about the 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 integration technology into uh, into education, uh, particularly in Indonesian uh, perspective. Thank you. Thank you very much, Miss Wicke, for the amazing presentation. And you have 
precise time about 25 minutes okay uh for the last speakers last but not least mr zohaib hassan sain from pakistan okay, okay before uh, okay before i start <clears throat> i will move to the next presenter i'll read a little bit about mr zohaib hassan sain uh, biography so Mr. Hassab, Mr. Zohaib Hassan Sain is work in many places. That's why he is a expert in practice. So <clears throat> on 2016, uh, he worked at Beacon House Central Region, Lahore, Pakistan. On 2020, he worked at assisting CEO in consultancy of compliance audit in different industries. And August 2020, he also worked as assisting admin manager in trainings and audits. And Mr. Hassan also have so many achievements. Uh, one of it is Mal Fellowship Program on December 2020. And he also attends so many trainings like quality control or quality assurance course by Noor International University in Lahore, Pakistan. And he also joined professional affiliation such as Singapore Quality Institute. Okay, without further ado, Mr. Zuhaib Hassan Saints, time is yours. Uh, greetings to all. My name is Zuhaib Hassan Sain, and welcome to Disruption in Education how current technology may affect teaching and learning process and educational management. And the topic is implementation of artificial intelligence and quality assurance in education. Before starting the session, uh, the abbreviations which I have used in the title is artificial intelligence and quality assurance. So before starting the session, these two terminologies must be understood. The first one is artificial intelligence. So what is artificial intelligence? A way of making a computer, robot, or software think and act like a human. So uh, what examples can be included the search engines you use, one of them is Google, self-driving vehicles. So many uh, software engineers insist that we can use only, call it artificial intelligence, if it performs at least as well as a human. Perform in this context refers to a human's computational speed, accuracy, and capacity only. So the second term is quality assurance. So what is quality assurance? Quality assurance is a mechanism used to monitor a particular procedure or a process in order to ensure that they are up to the expected levels of quality standards, the quality standards which you have marked. If it confirms that, if it ensures, then it will be termed as quality assurance. So what are the steps to be included in the quality assurance? The first one is the prevent bug. To remove the problem, to remove the defect. The second step is plan and the third step is verify. So what example comes in the quality assurance is the quality audit, self-evaluation, students or staff feedback. So this all includes in quality assurance. Okay, let's come to the introduction of this topic. I have explained each and everything in the slides and after this session the students can easily get these slides and i have explained each and everything 
in these slides so that uh, you can easily understood what is being written in these slides. The integration of artificial intelligence in quality assurance has emerged as a promising avenue for enhancing various aspects of education. Artificial intelligence technologies offer innovative solutions to streamline processes personalize learning experiences and improve overall educational outcomes. From automated grading and feedback systems to intelligent tutoring platforms, the implementation of artificial intelligence in quality assurance has the potential to revolutionize the way education is delivered and assessed. Artificial intelligence can improve the quality of education for all the students. Here are some examples of how artificial intelligence can be implemented in quality assurance in education. Here are 10 examples. The first one is the automated grading. The second one is plagiarism detection. The third one is predictive analytics. The fourth one is adaptive learning platforms. The fifth one is virtual teaching assistants. Number six is data analysis and insights. Number seven is quality control in online learning. Number eight is accessibility support. Number nine is proctoring and exam security. Number 10 is quality assurance auditing. So coming to the first example that is automated grading. So artificial intelligence powered systems can be used to automate the grading processes reducing the burden on teachers and improving the consistency, also analyzing student responses and providing feedback. So taking an example, an artificial intelligence system can access multiple choice questions, short answers, or even essays by analyzing patterns in student responses and comparing them to model answers. This save time for teachers and ensures consistency in grading across different assignments. So nowadays we are using different uh, AI softwares for this automated grading. The second one is the plagiarism detection. So artificial intelligence algorithms can compare student submissions with the vast database of existing texts to identify instances of plagiarism so what tools we use like uh, turnitin use artificial intelligence to analyze the text similarity between student papers and online resources academic journals and other student submissions this helps educators maintain academic integrity and address instances of plagiarism effectively. So this was uh, one of the tool which is being used for plagiarism detection. There are also other tools which we can use. Predictive analytics. So, uh, in predictive analytics, artificial intelligence can analyze student data to generate predictive models that identify students at risk of academic challenges. For instance, an artificial intelligence system can analyze historical data on student performance, attendance, and engagement to predict the likelihood of student dropping out or falling behind. This information can be used to provide targeted interventions and support to help struggling students. So artificial intelligence uh, softwares also predict analytics. The fourth example is adaptive learning platforms. Adaptive learning platforms are like smart learning systems that are designed to understand how each person learns best and then customize the learning experience accordingly. These platforms collect data about how a person interacts with the learning material, like answering questions or completing activities. 
they use this information to give feedback and suggest the best next steps for learning. So what it includes, Dreambox Learning, which is the math learning platform. Smart Sparrow, that is the adaptive learning platform for higher education. And as you all aware about the Khan Academy, online learning platform that provides adaptive practice exercises and inst uh, instructional videos across a wide range of subjects. So you can easily use these platforms to get benefit for your education. Artificial intelligence can power adaptive learning platforms that personalize education based on individual student needs. For example, an adaptive learning platform can use AI algorithms to analyze students' learning platforms, strengths, and weaknesses. Based on this analysis, the platform can deliver customized content, suggest appropriate learning sources, and adapt the difficulty level of assignments to optimize learning outcomes. So the fifth example is virtual teaching assistants. Virtual teaching assistants refers to the use of technology and digital tools to support and enhance the learning and teaching experience in an online or remote learning environment. It involves the use of various software platforms and resources to provide assistance and facilitate effective instruction. Artificial intelligence powered virtual assistants can support students and teachers by answering questions and providing guidance. For example, a virtual teaching assistant can be integrated into a learning management system or provided through a chatbot interface. It can answer student queries, offer explanations, and provide additional resources assisting students in their learning journey. This includes Google Bard and ChatGPT, which is the current revolutionized software which is being used by all the students, educators, institutions, researchers, and many others. Here are some of the common examples of virtual teaching assistance. If you take the first, that is the video conferencing. So what platforms comes in the video conferencing? That is the Zoom, Microsoft Teams or Google Meet that enable real time communication and interaction between teachers and students. So the second one is the learning management system that includes Canvas, Mod, Moodle, or blackboard provide a central hub for organizing and delivering course materials the third example related to this virtual teaching assistance is content creation tools various tools and software enables teachers to create engaging and interactive content for virtual teaching so powerpoint slides you make for the presentation or google slides Jamboard, Microsoft Whiteboard. So all the, this comes in the content creation tools. And the online collabor uh, collaboration tools includes Google Docs, Microsoft Office 365 that allow teachers and students to work together on projects, assignments, and presentations in real time. So the sixth main example is data analysis and insights. Artificial intelligence can analyze large volumes of educational data to extract meaningful insights. For example, AI algorithms can process data from student assessments, surveys, and feedback to identify patterns and correlations. This information can be used to inform decision-making process such as adjusting curriculum content, identifying effective instructional strategies or allocating resources more efficiently so there are several ai platforms and tools available for data analysis and insights here are some of the popular ones that is 
Python with libraries. So Python is a widely used programming uh, language for data analysis that provide extensive functionality for data manipulation, statistical analysis. R is a, a, st a statistical programming language that offers a wide range of packages and tools for analyzing for data analysis and visualization. Excel, Microsoft Excel is a widely used spreadsheet application that offers data analysis capabilities. Uh, it provides function formulas, pivot tables for basic statistical analysis, data manipulation, and visualization. Power BI. Microsoft Power BI is a business intelligence tool that enables data analysis, visualization, and reporting. As you can see in the diagram below, all these explains the pictures in front of you. Okay, quality control in online learning. Artificial intelligence can monitor the quality of online courses by analyzing various factors. For instance, AI algorithms can assess the design of online courses, evaluate user experience, track engagement metrics, and analyze student satisfaction service. This helps ensure that online courses meet quality standards and provide a positive learning experience for students. So the best examples include learning management system. Learning management systems platforms such as Moodle, Canvas, and Blackboard are widely used in online education. It provides the infrastructure for course delivery, content management, assessment, and communication between instructors and students. And the second best example you can take, and it is widely used nowadays, that is the MOOCs. It stands for Massive Open Online Courses. They are online courses that are designed to be accessible to a large number of participants from all around the world. MOOCs are typically offered by universities, educational institutions, or online learning platforms. Accessibility Support. Artificial intelligence can enhance accessibility in education for students with disabilities. For example, AI power tools can convert text to speech, allowing visually, visually impaired students to access content through audio. Artificial intelligence can also provide real-time captioning and translation services, making educational materials more accessible to students with different language needs. So the best example includes language translation. AI power translation services can assist individuals who speak different languages by automatically translating text into their preferred language. Examples include Google Translate and Microsoft Translator. So these are the best examples for language translation. The second one is the virtual assistants. Voice activated virtual assistants such as Amazon's Alexa, Google Assistant to provide spoken responses and perform tasks which are which can be beneficial for individuals with disabilities. The ninth one is the proctoring and exam security. Artificial intelligence based proctoring system can monitor online exams to detect instances of cheating. These systems can be can use facial recognition, eye tracking, and keystroke analysis to identify suspicious behavior. For example, an AI proctoring system can flag abnormal eye movements or use facial recognition to compare the test taker with their identification photo, ensuring the integrity of the exam. There are several AI platforms and uh, tools available for proctoring and exam security. These tools use artificial intelligence and machine learning al algorithms to monitor and maintain the integrity of online exams. Here are some of the examples in front of you. Online proctoring systems. These systems use AI algorithms to monitor test takers during online exams. And the best examples of online proctoring platforms includes Examity and Proctorio. For plagiarism detection tools, 
these tools use AI algorithms to compare submitted exam answers against a vast database of academic resources, publications, and internet sources to identify instances of plagiarism. So popular plagiarism detection tools include Turnitin, Grammarly, etc. Facial recognition and authentication. AI-powered uh, facial recognition technology can be used to identify verification and authentication before using online exams. So the uh, tools for this are Microsoft Azure Face API provide facial recognition capabilities. The last example of this topic is quality assurance audits. Artificial intelligence can automate the auditing processes by reviewing educational content courses and materials against predefined quality standards. For instance, an AI system can analyze course content to ensure it aligns with learning objectives, check for consistency in assignments and grading, or identify accessibility issues. This streamlines the quality assurance process and helps maintain high standard in education. It includes Grammarly, a popular tool that uses AI to check grammar, spelling, and writing. Sure. The second one is an automated testing tool that leverages AI algorithms to generate test cases and detect software bugs. These tools offer friendly interfaces and provide AI-powered functionalities to streamline quality assurance audits. As you can see, these are the main steps. This is called the PDA cycle, which is uh, being followed in the quality assurance audits. The first step is the plan. The second one is the do. And the third one is check. And the last one is act. First you plan, then you do, then you check, and then you act upon it. You implement it. So this is the PDCA cycle. Coming to the conclusion, the implementation of artificial intelligence and quality assurance in education holds immense potential for transforming the educational landscape. Through automated grading and feedback, intelligence tutoring systems, learning analytics, plagiarism detection, chatbots, and virtual assistants, adaptive learning platform, and data-driven decision-making artificial intelligence technologies can enhance efficiency, effectiveness, and personalization of the educational process. However, it is crucial to navigate this implementation with careful attention to ethical considerations, privacy concerns, and the need for human oversight. The collaboration between AI and, and human expertise can create a powerful synergy, ultimately empowering educators, students, and institutions to achieve improved educational outcomes and foster a dynamic and inclusive learning environment. As artificial intelligence continues to evolve, its responsible integration in quality assurance can pave the way for a future where education is more engaging, personalized, and impactful. We can expect to see even more innovation and effective ways to use artificial intelligence to improve the quality of education for all students. Thank you so much. And I will welcome your questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Zuhai Pasansen, for your presentation. It seems there's a problem with your electrical electrical problem. So, Mr. Zuhai Hassan already started the question and answer session on the chat. It's fine. Okay, we will enter the last session of the parallel session, which is question and answer session. From the chat, I already find one or two questions and already answered by Mr. Hassan, some of them, but some of them uh, it's not. So maybe you can show the question. Okay. 
Oke. Okay. Oke, okay, this is question for uh, Mr. Tolak. Oke, okay, what level is our education technology in Nigeria according to the first speaker from uh, Rachel? Ajayi Rachel, oke. Okay. Oke, okay, Mr. Tola. <clears throat> Mr. Tola, maybe you can respond to the question. Hello, Mr. Tola. Di Madura itu banyak namanya Tola. Iya, banyak. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, because Mr. Tola is out of reach, let's go on to the next question. Okay, question to Dr. Tola and Dr. Wiki. Could you please share how the technology integration applied in your university by giving some examples? such as the apps or LMS you use and how you manage the collaboration between all the decision makers related to the implementation of the technology. Okay, Mr. Tola is on. Okay, Mr. Tola. Uh, it's still mute, Mr. Tola. Okay. Yes, can you Oh. Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. I, I, I said that the level of technology in the country is still evolving because I remember based on our research, when COVID-19 came, the Minister of Education wanted all the public universities to start using LMS. We found out that the union of academic staff told the, Mr. Go, uh, the minister that the, due to poor funding, all these facilities not available in most tertiary institutions. But based on COVID-19, a lot of money has been devoted into the development of learning uh, management system in schools. In my university, before COVID-19, we're not really using LMS. But with the advent of COVID-19, We started, we started with Google Form, and uh, most of that we use Zoom and WhatsApp for students and for teaching and learning. That's what we are doing. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Tola, for your response. Okay, Dr. Wiki. Yes, um, thank you for the question uh, from uh, Mr. Hasma right. Daniel Ahmad, yes. Uh, as I mentioned before, that uh, we have a program student exchange. Uh, in terms of uh, we use uh, technology integration applied in uh, our uh, teaching teaching uh, learning process. We mostly use uh, <clears throat> Zoom. We mostly use uh, ap some applications such as uh, Zoom or uh, Google Meet or uh, what is this uh, VLM? Yeah. Uh, Dr. Tafik, we use VLM also, virtual learning management. Yes, okay, uh, uh, some application uh, also uh, Google uh, Classroom, uh, because uh, when the uh, uh, outbreak uh, COVID nineteen pandemic, uh, actually mostly we stop doing uh, the the face to face uh, traditional uh, traditional. Uh, scheme in, in terms of teaching learning process. So uh, uh, we, we do the remotely uh, using some uh, assisting te uh, technology uh, devices, uh, uh, also application. Uh, uh, but in other, uh, when, when we back to the normal as we did before, we did in before the outbreak uh, spread, Uh, spreading, uh, uh, we still use uh, both, but uh, we do have also the program, the special program, uh, a student exchange. Uh, mostly we use uh, the uh, online application. And 
Uh, I see. Uh, I read from the uh, the chat box uh, chart box about uh, is it is it is it there is a guarantee uh, technology can be sustained uh, to be used in uh, our process in university of school particularly in Indonesia yes uh, indeed I agree could be sustained and continued as the process of learning more flexible more exciting by using the technology so the uh, this still need uh, uh teaching to do so what what is is uh, is still use the technology however however uh enhancing the competences of teacher or lecture in using technology might be rise to be concerned yeah rise to be concerned uh, uh, as we need some uh, maybe financial uh, difficulties or resource or uh, devices also. So, uh, so there is a uh, balances balances be between sustain and in needs. Uh, it is. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for Dr. Ricky for your and Dr. Tolat for your response. Let's move on to the next questions. Okay, from Diana to Dr. Wicke, the question is, is there a model? I that, always, I always, uh, yeah. is yes, it related uh, to the Yeah, I already uh, answered that, yeah. Okay, next questions. Okay, to, from Mr. Reka to Mr. Zohab, is there any limitation for AI as a lecturer? Because there are a lot of subjects that cannot teach by the AI. Okay, uh, Mr. Zohaif is not a lecturer. He is a practical expert. Uh, but sir, I have answered this question that uh, the university management can uh, support in this regard as they uh, can support the lecturers by using learning management uh, system in order to resolve this issue. So is there any limitation? No. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, there is a limitation that um, uh, most of the uh, institutions are not able to support the lecturers. Ah, I see. So uh, if they can provide support to the lecturers by using a learning management system. I so see. they can, yes, exactly. Thank you, Mr. Zai for your response. Next question. Okay, this is question for all of the presenters. Uh, okay, as the time progresses, technological development also keep up with this time, starting from 1.0 to 4.0. Right now, we're entering 5.0. We are even familiar with the term AI, technology where all the confusion of students has been resolved by discovery of AI. So as a student, in the case of discovery of AI, is it a threat? To, you, to students or even a very profitable thing. Okay, interesting. After that, how do we, uh, we as a student use the invention of AI? Are there any limitation in using the AI? Okay, this is question for, as a student, yeah, student perspective, from the student perspective, is there any limitation on that? Okay, from maybe the, all of the presenters can respond to these questions. Okay, uh, uh, in, in my presentation, in my presentation, I said something here that some universities have decided to look at legislation on how students can use AI or ChatGPT because people believe that it's, um, it's, a, it's an opinion that when students use AI, it, re it removes thinking capability, academic writing from students. Another perspective is that AI is good, that it will allow students to have a kind of a knowledge, a kind of outline on what and what to do. And uh, can I continue? Yes, sure. Hello? Yes, 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 please. Yes, uh, another issue of AI being used by students is the issue of uh, because that when students use AI, 
kids. AI plagiarized works without giving a, a kind of a, a references to those who have those kind of works. So that's why people believe that there must be a legislation on how AI could be used by students. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, <clears throat> Mr. Paula. Okay, maybe Dr. Clear here. No. Oh, no. Okay, Dr. Wicke. As a student. Sorry, uh, the question, what is uh, the question is? AI as a student. Oh. Oh. Uh. This is uh, it's uh, complicated. I think maybe uh, uh, the the speaker from Pakistan uh, is already practicing in in the a a y a y, but in Indonesia is still a uh, kind of a uh, new. So we still learn about. Uh, this actually. So uh, even in our university, uh, our our leader, the leader of university, as uh, the manager of the university, to put uh, some unit course about uh, AY in uh, 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 material, uh, lesson material in uh, our university from the model, but still with uh, struggling about this. Okay, because uh this is a new a new for for me particularly for me okay so um but i believe uh this kind of uh, uh type of uh using technology can more uh acceptable can more can more uh flexible uh, to use to uh, assisting the learning process in the future uh, particularly in uh, in Indonesia or in Malang, I think. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Riku, for your response. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Uh, also, there are there are many uh, questions about a global standard on the use of technology. Uh, uh, I can answer like this. Uh, I hope. Uh, I hope. It could be happen, okay, but more complicated because uh, if if we put in the one standard, uh, can be not acceptable in if applied in many different uh, country in different with a different uh, culture, social and uh, type of society. So uh, uh, it will be hard if a uh, single standard for using technology. But in the end, now, uh, sometimes we use uh, uh, technology built by many companies, you know, many companies. So uh, there are many complicated it back, okay, because the companies have a standard, but our education uh, institution have a standard itself. So uh, sometimes it's more complicated. Okay, so but I agree. Maybe it will be good if uh, there is a one standard by using technology in education. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, from Mr. Zak, you want to? Uh, yes, I want to add that uh, artificial intelligence provides information and assistance to students in various ways. And uh, it also provides explanations and offer different uh, study tips and even assist with specific subjects and assignment. As I explained in my uh, presentation also, that uh, nowadays uh, uh, students write their research papers by using uh, uh, Chat GPT or Google Bard. These are the two uh, most recent uh, AI softwares which are being used by the researchers. And even I have given the ex uh, example to a participant that in our uh, judiciary, uh, one of the session judge of uh, uh, session court, he has used chat GPT for resolving the case of, uh, of a, a child who was of age 15 years. So uh, it's a very uh, best uh, software in, in the field of AI. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, we have one person who has raised his hand because the time is running out. 
Okay, Mr. Sonko Yusuf from Uganda, you can unmute. Hello, everyone. Yes. My voice loud and clear. Yes, yes, yeah. can hear you well. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon. Actually, I'm a Ugandan, but currently studying from Indonesia, from oh. State University of Malan. Uh, well, I would like to give my opinion about the question raised. And uh, my say is that uh, this IE is really so advantageous and disadvantageous. So my opinion as a student, I find it a challenging uh, thing because uh, most of the students nowadays have resolved to using uh, technology like ChatGBT and others to solve questions, to solve assignments. But it has also left a big gap whereby students cannot, you know, uh, find out something new. An example, if I'm given an assignment uh, from programming, uh, the lecturer is expecting something new from me, maybe find something new, maybe create something new. But because students have uh, get used to things like ChatGBT, whereby they put there the question and they get all the codings and they put it in the assignment and the assignment is done, it has left them uh, whereby they graduate with good results, but nothing in their heads, you know. So that is the disadvantageous part of this kind of IE. But the most advantage part of it is that uh, a student can use this same technology to learn something new, to find out something new. So it can be uh, of advantage and disadvantage depending on how the student is going to use this kind of technology. So I argue all my fellow students that it's very good to use this technology to help you uh, learn better, but not use it for doing your assignment or anything else which is not important. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Sonko. Okay, where are you studying? Uh, I'm doing my uh, degree in uh, electrical engineering at the State University of Malang. Oh, we have the same city, okay. Thank you very much for your response to the questions from your students. Yes, welcome, sir. Okay, I because the time is running out, uh, there's a lot of questions that can be answered, but after this, uh, maybe we can talk and share for the next discussion. Okay, as a conclusion for today, technology is really necessary in education and it really can affect the teaching and learning process. So what should we do as a lecturer or as a students? If I can borrow Mr. Clear word, we have to be techy. Okay, thank you very much for your uh, audience. Okay, I will return it to the moderator. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Bapak Taufik Akbar al Fajri. Can believe that we've already reached the end of today's webinar. Such an astonishing discussion we have today. Lots of new knowledge from so many points of views. Tons of thanks to all the speakers and participants for today's webinar. Please give everyone a round of applause, please. Let us all be guided by all the things we've learned throughout the webinar and hopefully able to influence our future. Now, before I forget, I would love to tell you all that we have a scholarship from Universitas Brawijaya, which was a scholarship that was open for all the foreign students that would love to have a chance to study the postgraduate program in Universitas Brawijaya. And now, before don't forget to fulfill in your attendance forms. We'll open the attendance forms until 9 p.m. of UTC plus 7 time. So please submit the form before that time. We're so sorry if there are any mistakes or technical difficulties and other unfortunate things. I'm Aditya Chaya Pavita Wulan. I'll see you when I see you. Thank you.
You have to scan the barcode to check the presence, your absence. Thanks.
Nobody 
back to the start.